On today's video, we are going to be talking about your fitness watch and the numbers that it spits out after a, a training session and whether you should be reading anything into those numbers. And the numbers I'm talking about, each brand calls it slightly different. Uh, Garmin, for example, calls it training effect. Uh, Sunto calls it recovery hours. Polar calls it training benefit. They each have their own name for it. And should you be reading anything into those numbers? Are they really important and should you be tracking them? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. My name is Brad. I'm from coachparry.com where we help you become fitter, faster and stronger. And we joined once again by our head coach, Lindsay Parry, to talk all about fitness devices. We all have them, but do we really use them to their fullest extent? Coach, nice to catch up again. Today we're talking about uh, sort of fitness watches and there's so many on the market, but each one has their own sort of metric on how they they sort of track your training and uh, sort of looking at your recovery numbers and what your load numbers are and, and Garmin, Sunto, Polo all have their, their, their own sort of uh, names for it. I mean training effect or uh, whether I mean I know with a Sunto it tells you how long you need to recover for. How accurate are those numbers and should we actually be sort of using them to guide how we train, how we recover, when we should be pushing hard. What's what's your take on it? Look, as with most most training tools, it's important to know why you're getting the answers you're getting, or rather put another way, what what is that watch using to determine what advice it's giving you going forward? And I think once you know those those things, then it becomes useful for you to Look at what the watch says, and then to to make some decisions about um, how to to tweak your, your your training going forward. So now most of those watches work on two principles, and one is chronic load. Chronic load meaning over a period of time. A lot of, and I don't know what all the watches use, but essentially when when calculating chronic load, most people use a 40 day. Um, cycle, but whether it's 30 days, 40 days, 45 days, that's really not that critical. Just know that the watch is having is storing enough data to make uh, a assignment of training load over or an average over a period of time. And what is it using to make that average? Well, it's using an acute training load. So the acute training load is what did I do today and in the previous seven days. And again, there's a little bit of wiggle room depending on, on, on the units and how they work. But, but as a general rule, we use acute training load. What have I done now in the previous seven days versus what have I done over the last 40 days? And that is what the watch is using to start making predictions around what you should and shouldn't be doing. So obviously, if you get a brand new watch and it's got very little data about you and you go out and you hit three three pretty solid sessions within the first four days of owning the watch, the watch is going to assume that that compared to the 40 days before of nothing, this is now an enormous load. So it's probably going to tell you, you need to rest for three days, whatever the, the, the case may be. Um, but once you've got 40 days of training data, it's going to start looking at what you have done and what you – it. I mean, it's not predicting, but it, it can, again, look at the average that you've done over the previous 40 days. And if it looks at your acute training load now and starts to try and look at what's coming up in front of you, it's giving you some warning signs. So, again, you know what's coming up in the week. So, if you know, for example, that Tuesday was a hell of a session and your watch is now telling you to rest for 72 hours, but you're also somebody who, who trains six days a week and you know that the next two days are going to be very easy training – and that you, you will, your watch will, with each training load, start to give you slightly different messages. Um, and as you said, you know, someone like Polar, that Polar they use words like under-training um, or overreaching to, to give you warnings either side. Like if you go into a recovery week, often you know it's a recovery week. And you know that, yes, you're probably going to lose a little bit of fitness in that week. But the freshness that you're going to gain either because you've got a race at the end of the week or because you know you're going to go into another serious couple of weeks of hard training. You know your body needs that little bit of recuperation. So you're not going to worry that your watch is beeping at you by day four under training or under reaching. Um, so useful to just draw your attention to what's going on, but really make decisions on whether to increase or decrease based on what you know has worked for you in the past. Um, 
of course, if you're somebody who's getting injured and sick all of the time and your watch keeps telling you 72 hours of recovery and you're only giving it 24 hours and then going for another hard run, then yes, you're going to be somebody who needs to use it to pull back. But I think the important thing is that you know it's chronic versus acute. Um, and if you know that, uh, then when your watch flags you, you can make smart decisions about what to do in the next three or four days. Lindsay, does something or can something like this replace a coach? I mean, in your advice, obviously, I mean, with with total transparency, you are a coach and, and I'm sure you're going to say absolutely not. But is is it possible to use those those guidelines and those indicators on those watches to to train you to the best of your ability? The more experienced you are, the, the, the more likely they are to be able to help you to do that. So I would say yes. And I think... One of the things that I do like about those type of warning signals is that if you're going to err, you always want to err on the conservative side. And that essentially is what the, these watches and, they, and, and you know, when they tell you to take recovery is they, they, as a rule, from what I've seen, are very conservative. So I will say that using those strictly as guidelines – you're not going to be the best that you can possibly be. However, you're going to go a long way to avoid getting injured and a long way to avoid overtraining. And so you are going to get good results. And if you want to get your best results, there's always an element of risk. And that's where I think a coach comes in because the coach helps you to narrow that element of risk. And hey, we still get it wrong sometimes. Um, there's no question that we get it wrong sometimes, and it is because we always are looking to get the absolute best, and there's always an element of risk in being the absolute best. Thanks for joining us on this video. Don't forget, if you don't want to miss any of these videos that we put out, hit the subscribe button over here. Uh, you can catch our latest video over here. And one of our most popular is over here. And also, if you want to shave 10 minutes off your PB, all you need to do is download our free strength training program. You can get that right here.